You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Welcome, everyone, to another awesome episode of Ask Drone You. My name is Paul. And I'm Rob. And this is episode 380 that you're listening to. We thank you very much for spending a few minutes of your day with us. Absolutely. As always, lots going on. Uh, Just a few tips here. Uh, CATS has now actually started it to schedule those tests. If you have pre-registered for your 107 test, you can now pay for it and get it scheduled through CATS. Um, But what I'm learning is you can also get it scheduled through the local center itself. So CATS may say you're not scheduled and registered until you are with them, but you can actually come up with your time slot at the local center, schedule your test, and then you'll actually end up paying the CATS fee and all that when you sign up or when you go to attend the test itself. Nice. Anyway, just want to let you know, give you guys an update on that. I scheduled my test for 1 o'clock, August 29th, so I'll be the second person in that office. Who's Um, the first? I don't know, but I want to find out. I'm going to show up at 11 o'clock a.m. just to figure out who it is. Yeah, <laughs> so. Maybe you can barter. <laughs> yeah, um, <laughs> just but, to be first. But it's really funny. We've got a lot of cool podcasts coming up, um, and some of them are really important when it talks to you. You know, forming your business for 107. One of the things that you really need to think about is 107 does give you a lot of ability to fly in many places. But if you are in class Bravo, Charlie Delta airspace, you're going to need a COA or some sort of letter of agreement, permission from the tower to be able to fly there. So we're going to talk about the things that you can do to your business and set yourself up now so that you have many forms of a competitive advantage against your competitors. Now, sounds like good stuff. It is really Looking good stuff. To that. It is really good stuff. Well, you know, uh, as you know, mm-hmm. uh, there's a guy here in town who has uh, written the FAA and complained about me three times, three mm-hmm. separate times. Uh, luckily, nothing came out of any of those actions. Right. But I hope that in telling other people the competitive advantage, how to take these steps to uh, make your business better than other others, that not only my business, but other businesses will be so far ahead of this guy's business in a year, he won't exist. So I love helping you guys. I'm mm-hmm. a, I also love some vengeance. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Paul telling the truth. Anyway, it's you know it's a double benefit over here. So <laughs> <laughs> right on. Anyway, guys, I I'm just giving you something to laugh about wherever you're listening this morning, whether you're in the car, you're in the gym, wherever it is. We thank you. Uh, if this podcast has been helpful to you at all, please give it a share. Please leave us a review wherever you listen to the podcast, whether it's on iTunes, Stitcher. Podomatic, wherever it is, we love those reviews. Absolutely. We appreciate them very much. And guys, we need your questions. AskDroneU.com. We know you have them. And I know we're into 380, I guess is what we're on now. So a lot of questions have been asked, but not all of them. There's no way. Things are constantly changing. You're learning new things. You're discovering new ways of doing things. And all of those scenarios lead to questions. I already see a new question, Rob. Should I get the new Z3 camera for my Inspire One, or should I upgrade to the X5? The Z3? Yeah. The new one, the Zoomable one. Yeah. It's an X3 with Zoom. They call it the Z3. Boom. That's going to be a tough one to pass up. <laughs> yes, it is. To be able to, use, to have the Zoom, right? <laughs> denied. Where's my denied stamp? I don't have an approved that stamp. That was the pa- pat on the shoulder, like, hey, we, we're we going to need to buy one. Yeah, I was like, hey, Mr. Checkbook. <laughs> How you doing? Sometimes I feel like this is a father-son relationship. <laughs> That's right. uh, hey, Dad, I really need a Can I get drone. a 20 spot? <laughs> Can I get a 20 spot? <laughs> 20,000. <000. laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, that whole anyway, father-son thing is anyway. taking a notch up. Yeah, out of my Yeah, but seriously, astronew.com, send in your questions. We know you have them. And keep in mind that if you have a question, thousands of other people have that same question, and they will learn from your Courage in what, calling in and asking that question. What do we say we lower the, the barrier to entry to get one of those free SD card cases? Okay. How many do we have left, first of all? Three. Three of them left. Three left. Okay. We are going to give those three away to someone very special. It has to be a good question. You've got to use an accent. No longer do you have to do the video, but after seeing Marco's video in Miami, uh, you may want to do a video. Because if you, if you can pass that up, if you can do better than that. Let's just say we sent Mark 
five K. No, I'm just kidding. We <laughs> he gave a little. We bonus gave an in inspire. What? <laughs> Tatum <Tenem> Phantom Four. <laughs> Here you go. <laughs> we won't tell you why. Merry Christmas. <laughs> yeah, we uh, won't tell you. <laughs> just saying, Marco had to make an edit to the video. Yeah. <laughs> <that's> <laughs> <right>. <laughs> but we were like, hey, thanks for the love, man. <laughs> <laughs> a little too much love, frankly. <laughs> anyway, yeah, you loved it. I love getting those videos too. They are, oh, yeah, they are really fun. special. And you know fun. what? I like it when people are themselves. They're being silly. They're having a good time. Yep. Because a lot That's of people cool. take themselves so seriously and they're like, oh, look at this guy. What an idiot. It's like, no, no, no. He, he's, he's having fun. He's just enjoying himself. And I feel that so, uh, so often we get caught up in the, the nine to five grind. We, uh, we get stuck in that mm-hmm. phase. I call it the mm-hmm. phase. Life's too short. It really is. If you're not enjoying what you're doing, you're not doing it right. That's right. Period. Let's get into uh, today's question. Hey, Paul. Hey, Rob. How you guys doing? My name is Jay. I'm out in Miami, Florida. I really appreciate what you guys are doing out there for the drone community and for all drone pilots. I really appreciate that you're going intel with the business aspect of it. That's something that I want to pursue. Uh, that has been really my uh, effort for the past four years, trying to get uh, into the business. Uh, but I have a question in regards to the DJI Phantom 3 Professional. I called in today because I was getting uh, aircraft warming up, saying that the IMU needed to warm up. I've owned two other Phantom 3s, and they've never done that before. Uh, this is my third one. Uh, the first one was a flyaway, which... Uh, They recovered. I still don't know why it flew away. DJI couldn't also explain to me why it flew away. But I had, you know, calibrated my compass. I calibrated my IMUs when I was out there. And now with this new one that I have, uh, it's asking or it's giving me a warning light saying that the IMU or the aircraft needs to warm up. I called DJI and they told me that I needed to calibrate the IMU. And that every time that I fly in a new location, regardless of the distance, I always have to calibrate the compass. In their tutorial, they don't specify. They just give you a tutorial on how to adjust the or how to calibrate your compass and your IMUs. But they don't tell you when and why you should calibrate your IMUs and your compasses. And I'd like to see if you guys can... uh, you know, get some feedback on that, and uh, we would really appreciate it. Thanks for your time, guys. Uh, you know, I think uh, it's really interesting that he's having this problem with the Phantom Two and the early Phantom Threes. The IMU not warming up actually had a significant problem and would cause flyaways. Okay. Um, if you remember on the Phantom Two, you could you could turn the props on as soon as you wanted to, mm-hmm. with the Phantom Three. I'm not sure how he got a Phantom 3 without the IMU warm-up. Every Phantom 3, Phantom 4, Inspire 1, actually not Inspire 1, Phantom 3 or Phantom 4 I've ever seen, makes you wait to warm up the IMU. But Hmm. there is a little tip and trick. Now, you're supposed to do your IMU calibration on a flat level surface normally, and and you can do it inside or outside. I prefer to do it inside. Um, A little tip and trick for you, though. If you calibrate the IMU at a colder temperature, it will take less time to warm up then say if you calibrate your IMU and it's 90 degrees outside and you go back outside and it's only 60 degrees, it's going to take you a lot longer to warm up the IMU than if you were to go the opposite up, go the opposite way. Okay. Warm, up, warm up your IMU in the refrigerator. Don't well, do that. Well, they could come into our office because it's usually frigid in here thanks well, to Well, you know, the studio has, has to stay cold for the cameras, uh-huh. Rob. So okay. that's why it's cold in here, man. Right. Anyways... It sounds like maybe his drones that he had, maybe the that was the faultiness. <laughs> Can I use that word? Faultiness sure. is that they weren't getting that warning, and they should have been. True. And and that led to the flyaway. True. So maybe the one that he has now is actually doing it the way that it's supposed to be doing it. True. Okay. Yeah. I no. I mean, uh, he could be the reason for the evolution of the IMU warm up. Who knows? But I know for a fact. In the beginning, Phantom 2, Phantom 3's people would not, you know, they would just take off, just go. And uh, a lot of people weren't waiting for their home points. They didn't even know what the strobing green light meant because no one read the instructions. So uh, this was really a reaction from DJI saying, okay, well, we need to actually inhibit people from starting Mm -hmm. until everything is ready to go. Yes. So he mentioned that they told him to calibrate 
every time he goes somewhere different. I mean, it, it sounds like the way he said it, they were saying, if you go 30 feet away, recalibrate. No, I would not recommend that. I think that's just a overreaction from uh, from whoever was telling him what he was telling him. Okay, they're just saying, essentially, they're erring on the side of over-calibrating, essentially. Yes. Okay, so what do you do? What would you recommend he do when it comes to calibration? When it comes to IMU calibrations, I only do them uh, after firmware updates and when I buy the drone. Uh, compass calibrations, I do about every 50 to 100 miles. So okay. anytime I change locations, um, uh, more than 50 to 100 miles, I will do an I, or I will do a compass calibration. Okay, so you're here and you're flying outside of our studios, and then you have to go do a shoot at a ranch that's 100 miles away. You'll recalibrate it there. Mm-hmm. And then when you come back here, you'll recalibrate it here. Yeah. Okay. So uh, do you know how you can tell if your compass needs calibration? I bet you're going to tell us. It's called the toilet bowl effect. Um, uh, it's actually in our book, if you right. if you remember it reading is. that from the edit. Uh, I do remember edit. reading it. So essentially what happens is that the drone starts to yeah. wobble in this circular pattern. And it the inside corner of the wobble is lowered or tilted. So that's why you get the toilet bowl kind of effect. Imagine, you know, if you just drop the kids off at the pool and you said, all right, it's time for you to go. And they're going down into the, you know, that's what it looks like. <laughs> I don't need those visuals. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. Um, we can stick to the drone visual, Paul. I think everybody would appreciate that. Yeah. Um, it's funny in the past, DJI used to teach people not to do a compass calibration unless they changed time zones. Hmm. The one thing I'll tell you guys, if you are doing compass calibration, you're in between tall buildings, you're near lots of steel, don't do your calibration near those areas. Just trust me, don't do it. Find a grassy area that's a block away. How far away from steel? I mean, are we talking five feet or 50 feet? 50 feet. Okay, so a fair amount. Yeah. Okay. There have been times where I was in the middle of the street, the furthest possible way I could be from that building, and it still didn't work. Wow. So, what about things like your cell phone? Do those impact? I yes. know this is stuff we've talked about in the past, but cell phone, iWatch. Oh, I was so bad. I was doing a training in um, Colorado with with MCW, and uh, I had my iWatch on. And mm. in the middle of the training, I interrupted and said, "And if you have an iWatch on, take it off to do your compass calibration." And I did a compass calibration with my iWatch on. <laughs> and guess what? It didn't work. <laughs> It was all part of the demonstration. That's right. Yeah, it was all part of the plan. Duh. (laughs) That's right. Anyway, Anyway, so don't do those things. But basically what he's running into is it's it's doing what it's supposed to be doing. It's notifying him the way it's supposed to be notifying him. Yes. And follow those instructions and wait for it to warm up. Yes. I mean, it's pretty much that simple. It is that simple in my opinion. All right, cool. Anyway, yeah, I think that's going to do it for us today. Uh, Guys, thank you again so much for listening. Uh, If... You need a discount on a Go Professional case because we love the team at GPC. Uh, use code DRONEU15 on the Go Professional Cases website so you can get a discount on a case for you. Uh, if you're looking to get trained, if you're looking to become a part of the community, now can be a better time. Here's why Aviation Lawyer is coming on board to drone you for a few hours and is going to be available to only our members to do a study session. It's going to be an online study session nice. with aviation lawyers, certified flight instructors, FAA peeps. Like literally, they're coming into Drone U to spread the word. So if you are a Drone U member, that's you, quite a round table. Yeah, if you're going to get a, if you're a member, guess what? You're going to get all that for free. So if you're not a member, studying may be more difficult. And I'm going to leave it at that. Anyway, <laughs> that's going to do it for us today. My name is Paul. I'm Rob. And this is Ask Drone You.